Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Bankrupt? No, say EU language police. It's debt adjusted. EU is preventing blitz on cosmetic cowboys by blocking government from regulating. A Romanian sausage to be saved under new EU rules. Only a referendum can solve Britain's European impasse. Plus, Somerset floods. The EU is ethically cleansing people off the Somerset levels. Later in the show, we have pictures and reports from the UK Independence Party conference in Torquay. But first, let's take a look at today's news highlights. It's Monday, 3rd of March. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Bankrupt? No, say EU language police. It's debt adjusted. The EU is trying to erase bankruptcy from the English language and replace it with the term debt adjustment. A drive by Brussels to remove the stigma of going bust would include a ban on the word which has been in use in Britain since the mid-16th century. It raises the bizarre prospect of businessmen who run into financial trouble having to say, bad news, I've been declared debt adjusted. The idea is being considered as part of wider reforms to harmonise financial arrangements across the EU, including making it less troublesome to open bank accounts in different countries and easier to escape from debt and be given a second chance. Now, given that the Eurozone economies are over halfway to hell in a handbasket, these new rules that allow folks to plummet into a fiscal flameout and be handed a get-out-of-jail-free card just moments before they crash and burn is going to be useful. I can see Mario Draghi giving his speech after the European elections, of course, the immortal words coming under terms of the new fiscal compact awarded by my honourable comrades, Mr Barroso and Mr Van Rompuy, the ECB will be accessing, via the European Stability Mechanism, a new round of financing, which will be termed bail-ins. These will be used to add liquidity and defer the need for a European Central Bank debt adjustment. <laughs> Sounds so much better than we ran out of funny money and the euro has collapsed and we've all gone bankrupt, don't you think? EU is preventing blitz on cosmetic cowboys by blocking government from regulating. EU rules are leaving women vulnerable to cosmetic cowboys, according to the country's top doctor. Professor Sir Bruce Kyog, medical director of NHS England, said skin-plumping dermal fillers urgently needed to be classified as prescription-only medicines to control their distribution. Speaking to the Mail on Sunday, Professor Kyog said... EU rules appear to mean we cannot make fillers prescription-only medicines. I strongly believe more patients will be protected from cosmetics cowboys if we make it much more difficult for them to get their hands on them in the first place. Non-surgical procedures account for 9 out of 10 cosmetic interventions, but at the moment, with the exception of Botox, they are all almost entirely unregulated. Well, it's clear that the cosmetics industry is growing rapidly, and perhaps that is also a reflection of how social norms are making women feel underconfident about their appearance and self-esteem. There is a lot of disconnect in these sorts of regulations. Here we see no regulation on these products, where there clearly are deep health and well-being concerns. Yet, we have a barrage of regulation, not adjusted once or twice, but at least three times on the vitamin and mineral supplements and health products markets, imposing restrictions and, in some cases, removal of products from the market. What this really highlights, however, is the clear disconnect between the people and the public and the policymakers. This comes because of the failures in governmental structure within the EU. The trio of EU Commission, Council of Ministers and corporate influence creates a mechanism that drives an ideological idea of subservience, in effect creating a power elite which presides over a public serfdom. That, folks, is not a democracy, and that is why you so often hear me discredit the EU for its rhetoric about democratic values. <music> Brexit. 
Romanian sausage to be saved under new EU rules. Romania's national dish looks like it will be granted a European Union reprieve. The Romanian Meat Association says officials in Brussels have agreed that bicarbonate of soda, which gives spicy meat, bullet-shaped grilled meat, delicacies, their springy texture, will be permitted by the EU. Romanian food industry officials said Monday they have been lobbying Brussels since the ban last July on meat. Meat originated in Turkey during the days of the Ottoman Empire and are traditionally eaten with mustard and hunks of bread or French fries. Romanians eat 25 tons or half a million of these skinless sausages a day. Of course, there is still no hope for the village of Stilton to return to making their cheese, as we reported back in 2013. The village of Stilton was banned from making its namesake cheese under EU regulation. However, EU harmonisation regulations aimed at unifying lavatory flushes across Europe, a key political plank of Mario Draghi's economic recovery process, will delight the management team at Armitage Shanks, no doubt. Anyway... Whilst we're on the topic of brands, when it comes to sausages, I've only got one thing to say. Wolves. Only a referendum can solve Britain's European impasse. Eurosceptic sentiment has risen sharply in the UK. In common with pan-European trends, the proximate cause has been immigration. Membership of the EU is blamed for the unexpectedly large wave of inward migration that followed the opening of UK labour markets to citizens of those former communist countries in Eastern Europe that have joined the Union since 2004. Now, this article goes on to say, Today, the few remaining pro-Europeans in the Conservative Party are all grandees, slowly shuffling off the stage of history, having long since given way to the Eurosceptics who now dominate their party. Mainstream Conservatives are either now dismissive and disdainful of Europe, or actually hostile to it. Now, I recommend taking the time out of your day to have a look at this, as it takes a well-rounded view of the political landscape. Now, as the campaign season gets underway and we move towards European elections in May, we can expect a flood of information, dogma and rhetoric on a scale not seen since, well, since mid-February, really. On the topic of floods, let's return to Somerset. This article, Somerset Floods, the EU is ethically cleansing people off the Somerset levels. Dear Editor, thank you for all your hard work reporting on the flooding of the Somerset Levels. On a PR front, I would recommend people of the Somerset Levels should refer to themselves as living on the Somerset Levels as wetlands, not floodplains. They are and have been for over 600 years managed wetlands. They have been made into floodplains by EU directives and UN policy and the Environment Agency has just been a puppet of the lobby groups for wildlife. Now one question that I would like to ask is, looking at the Environment Agency plan for water in Somerset and North Somerset, why the wetlands area between Western Supermare and Clevedon in North Somerset did not flood the same as South Summit levels if it was all part of the plan. Now the Wetland Wildlife Trust and the RSPB lobbied North Somerset Council and the Environment Agency to make the moors floodplains and create wildlife reserves. However, the North Somerset area has not been flooded this year. Now, I understand that the Bridgewater MP has asked for the government or council to compulsory purchase flooded homes on the Somerset levels. And although this will help the people who have been flooded out of their homes to rebuild elsewhere, it is playing into the hands of the planners who planned the flooding in the first place. They, I believe, want to remove the people from the level in favour of wildlife. Well, many thanks to Ian for this letter, and of course, in our view, you're absolutely correct. This also ties in with the less often reported but still very real Agenda 21 policies of the United Nations, which was agreed as a strategy for implementation at the Rio World Summit. In that paper, it specifically talks about the return of managed wetlands to floodplain and that those areas be excluded from human population. Capitalising on the recent flood disaster and compulsory purchasing people's homes, which under other circumstances would be deeply resisted, all fits with the global agenda. 
a brilliant piece of joined up thinking and connecting the dots from Ian Summerell. Thanks again, Ian. Oh, on to the UK Independence Party conference. Now, as we announced last week, the unit took itself down to the UK Independence Party Spring Conference held in Torquay. What a great opportunity to meet up with people who watch our news on YouTube and read our website. And of course, follow us on Google+, Facebook and Twitter. Now, up on the main monitor, you can see some of the photographs I took. Now, it doesn't look very busy, and that's because these were taken before the conference opened. Now, I was hoping to take some more throughout the day and perhaps even capture some video, but we were all kept so busy talking to the delegates and taking details for all the new subscribers to our email newsletter, we almost made some... We also made some very informative contacts, and I will be contacting you very soon to follow up on our conversations. It was also really great to see the UKIP leadership team in action, with some just brilliant presentations. I particularly resonated with the presentation delivered by Tim Aker, and Nigel Farage, of course, stole the floor with his leadership speech. It's so refreshing, however, to meet and talk with a political party whose MEPs and candidates are very real people, from diverse and varied backgrounds, whose careers are unrelated very often to politics. You get a real sense that the candidates have a deep connection and resonance with the people of Britain, and I too became convinced that come the elections in May, they really will be a huge change in British politics. Now remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.